How's the Matrix? I hope you're all well. You're most likely prepping for your Friday maths paper one, be it a June paper, prelims, finals. I got you. Don't worry too much. We're gonna just run through what's gonna be in this paper, what to look out for, how you should prep, and hopefully I'll be able to just keep some of your, your stress and nerves at bay. So in paper one, we've got our basic algebra section. It's just going to be 25 marks. You'll get a nice factorizing question, some inequalities, a quadratic formula. You could get some nature of the roots and one of those cracking, impossible looking level four questions, typically question 1.3 or 1.4. That's going to be 25 marks. And then you've got number patterns. And in number patterns, you've got your quadratic sequence. You've got your arithmetic sequence and series, your geometric sequence and series. You've got sigma notation. You've got sum to infinity. It is comparatively a, a softer section versus functions and calculus. So you can really bank some marks there. So these first 50 marks, a little bit soft, I think, well, I believe that is why the paper is structured like that. Just so you know, you can enter it, have a bit of confidence, and yeah, just feel a bit better about yourself before calculus optimization kind of comes at you. And then we've got functions and graphs. So your basic functions, your linear function, your parabola, exponential, hyperbola, the big four, and your centerpiece in grade 12, which was the inverse function section, like you know, the, the inverse of an exponential is a log and how we swap x and y and all that good stuff. That is a grand total of 35 marks. Slightly trickier, you know, especially those interpretation type questions. Sometimes they integrate your calculus knowledge in functions and they ask you to calculate the equation of a tangent to a graph. So yeah, things can get quite uh, critical very fast. And then we get to finance, so basic stuff, simple interest, simple decay, compound interest, compound decay, present value, outstanding balance, future value. So we use present value for all our loans. We want to know how much we are liable for in this present moment. How much do we owe? And then future value for all our investments, savings accounts, fixed deposits. How much is our money going to be worth? And all the questions that come with that, um, a lot of formulae that you have to utilize there. And then we get to everybody's favorite, calculus. So calculus is broken up into three sections specifically. It's number one, basic calculus. So it's your, your basics. So first principles and derivatives, uh, typically 10 marks. Then we get to your cubic functions, typically 15 marks, stationary points, concavity, points of inflection, all that good stuff. And then we get to an absolute cracker of a question. Um, optimization, maxima and minima. Looks quite impossible. You have to formulate your own equation, calculate the first derivative, equate to zero, solve for maximums, minimums, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, things um, things can get quite tricky in that section. Just keep your wits about you. You know, they could ask you, uh, you know, vel velocity and acceleration questions, rate of change. They could give it to you on a function. Uh, you need to be prepared for pretty much everything. And then you've got probability with the focus here um, on the fundamental counting principle, which is the grade 12 stuff. The grade 11 stuff, I like to call it the big three, uh, tree diagrams, Venn diagrams, and contingency tables. And also just take note of the grade 10 stuff, like mutually exclusive questions and the addition rule, all of that. And your paper is a grand total of 150 marks. So if it's 150 marks and you've got 180 minutes to complete it, that means you've got 1,2 minutes per mark. In other words, if you've got a five marker, you have six minutes to complete that question. Just some quick maths. So time yourself in practice, pace yourself during the exam, and just make sure you finish the paper. Don't leave any marks on the table. So interesting concept here. Um, Bloom's taxonomy. So as you know, South Africa was colonized by both the, the Dutch and the British. British were a bit of a more powerful force. So they ruled South Africa for a, um, a good period. And as a result, we've got a lot of uh, British colonial legislature. It's why we speak English. It's why we watch the English Premier League. Uh, and it's also why we utilize this education system of theirs, uh, whereby Bloom's taxonomy it sets out every paper that we write. So Bloom's taxonomy, we've got uh, four levels, level one questions, level two questions, level threes, and level fours. So right at the bottom, your absolute base. These are your knowledge questions. That's level one. 
And that's about 20% of the paper, which is study marks. It's the basic stuff, the things you do in class, you know, like a good factorizing question or calculating the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. It's, it's the same stuff over and over again. And then we've got our more routine procedures, so slightly trickier ones, typically your, your simultaneous equations um, in, in question one. That's going to be a grand total of, well, they're saying 52 to 53 marks. So let's let's go with it. I've taken this from the teaching guidelines. And then we've got your slightly more complex procedures. Think of like nature of the roots or perhaps even a trickier outstanding balance question. So that's all going to be for, let's say, 45 marks. And then you've got those tricky level fours. So your optimization questions or trickier interpretation questions in functions and that's going to be 22 to 23 marks now those are the trickiest questions of the paper and if you're consistently nailing them down you most are you're most likely a distinction candidate you are pushing for that a in maths so yeah look if you are battling and you're just wanting the pass here your focus needs to be on these level one and level two questions usually the first few questions of a section so like first principles and derivatives in calculus or calculating nth terms and the next term in sequences and series or utilizing like basic factorials in probability so yeah just a little breakdown of of everything just a quick discussion and look, whatever happens in your paper one, whether it's June, whether it's for prelims or finals, just put your head down, move on and take the weekend to study and brace yourself for paper two on the Monday. Remember, you cannot go back and change that paper. It's pointless stressing about it. Um, and just set your sights, have some tunnel vision on the paper two stuff, stats, analytical, trig and Euclidean. But you know, that's the problem for the weekend for now. Let's push on, let's vamanos, let's go and move and ensure that our paper one mark is as good as we hope for it to be. Do your absolute best. It's super important that you get off to a flyer here, you have a good paper one and you go in with a bit of confidence into paper do. Pa paper do, really, really goon, into paper two. Use some of that momentum, use some of that flair and go into the weekend on a bit of a high and finish strong. Paper one is really important. It sets the tone for, well, the entire weekend. Um, and, you know, don't just slack off on that Friday. You know, don't put on the TV and watch Friends or Big Bang or, you know, Doom Scroll on your phone. Goon Scroll. Um, watch some Goon School videos. You, you see what I did there? Okay, love you. Bye. Thanks for watching the video and good luck for your paper.